Ah, we return to The Witcher 3, the game where Geralt of Rivia, who's from Rivia, by the way, in case you didn't know where Geralt of Rivia was from, he's from Rivia, does good deeds like bringing back your missing goat, family therapy, and resurrecting your unborn child. That's all to come later though, as right now, I need to find Siri. We start the day with a nice brisk walk down the park where I spot a priest, and Christianity has taught me to never say no to a priest, even if his confession booth has a penis-sized hole in it. But there would be no confessions here, he just wants me to burn a load of bodies, no questions asked, so I'm sure he's an honourable man with no reason to do this apart from just clearing up the neighbourhood. It turns out though that one of these bodies is very much alive, so that's going to make burning him a little bit more awkward. Like sex? Burning bodies is a lot more stress-free when they're already dead. I have a chat with Big Man and it turns out this priest and his boys try to rob him and leave him for dead. I headed back to the priest ready to correct him of his crooked ways and that you can't just pay someone to cover up your dirty laundry. He then offers me more money, so yeah, I take it and get on with my day. I wanted this to be a message about how you should stick true to your values and money should never buy you, but the amount of goats I can buy with this bonus is unreal. I then head down to the local inn and ask the owner if he's seen Siri at all, but he tells me there's some dodgy men coming, so I should leave. They proceed to make fun of me carrying two swords, which is a weird thing to make fun of considering they're an inanimate object with no feelings whatsoever. I mean, they're not the reason that their kids don't love them. But anyway, I decide to tell them I'm a witcher, as it's not mandatory, but polite. Like when I move into a new neighbourhood and have to tell everyone that I'm a registered sex offender. You'd be surprised the amount of people that respond with same. So they leave me alone, and the innkeeper is appreciative of me not starting some sort of brawl, so he tells me I can find a man by the name of Hendrix if I want to learn more about Siri. When I step outside, everyone seems to be retreating into their homes, and I find a dude saying he's going to shag someone's daughter. And while this could be a bit of light-hearted banter between the boys, I make a quick-fire decision to attack. Did you like that pun? Because I shot fire out of my hand. <laughs> this is premium content. This makes his friends angry and ultimately ends up in a fight. So while the innkeeper was grateful I kept the peace in the pub, I'm sure he won't be happy I've left dismembered bodies in his front garden. So I rock up to Hendrick's gaff and the place is absolutely grim. I thought being born in South East London was bad, but Jesus, this is just depressing. Some dude with PTSD tells me that the wild hunt rolled through the place and tore it apart but I doubt it was exactly a desirable family village with two up two downs across the street beforehand. I find Hendrix and I don't think he's going to be getting up anytime soon, so I track out his gaff and his secret basement. Jeez. The Wild Hunt may be the most feared group in the land, but they're not very thorough with their pillaging as they didn't even check for a basement. Unfortunately, there's no children down here, and I mean, what other use does a basement actually serve? I do however find a book that Hendrix kept as he was tracking Siri, which is weird behaviour, but it turns out she may have been at the Bloody Baron's castle. So I take all of his valuables and head to the castle, when upon arrival, everyone again retreats into the safety of their own homes because they're all scared of witches. Everyone's out here judging Geralt like he's some sort of merciless killer. Anyway, I slaughter a couple of the Baron's men in cold blood because they had some beef with me as apparently that dude I set on fire earlier were his boys. Surprisingly, the guards don't let me in because I have to face the consequences of the bad things I've done. This isn't what I'm used to as a straight white male. I mean, Carl Rittenhouse can murder people on the street with an AR and turn into a celebrity, but Geralt chops a couple heads off and suddenly he's not a model citizen. I'm not giving up that easily though, so I find an old dude who's just kind of chilling and the only one that didn't run into his house, and he tells me that there is another way to get into the castle, as if you just go around the side, there's a big gaping hole, which is honestly quite a flaw. It's not even like it's hidden really either, it's wider than your mother. Speaking of your mother, I also run into a water hag while I'm down here, and she's aggressive but also soaking wet, which just so happens to be my type. I climb up through the well into the Baron's castle, style out a nice little trip into a cutscene, and the Baron doesn't seem to really care nor ask how I appeared in his bush. You should really get that hole filled, big man. I mean, I could have been an assassin. Anyway, he tells me to like and subscribe, and also knows that I'm looking for Siri, so proceeds to tell me through an interpretive gameplay sequence what really happened. I really do love the Siri parts of this game because her gameplay is just so enjoyable. <clears throat> gameplay. I find a child who's lost in the woods, so I ask her where she's from and she tells me without hesitation. This is how you get snatched up, kid. It's a good thing I'm Siri and not the priest from earlier, or we might be on our way to the confession booth right now. I protect her from some walls, even though I should really just leave her to fend for herself, and we then come across a guy who's literally been torn in half. Siri hits the kid with the, he had a fall, so while she may be an extremely powerful being, she is also a terrible liar. Like, yes, I hate it when I fall over and my entire torso detaches from my body. It's a real inconvenience. The kid actually believes me though, so I guess she's stupider than the people who said DeMar DeRozan was the worst free agent signing of 2021. Anyway, we end up fighting a big old werewolf and saving some of the Baron's men in the process. He then rewards Siri and the kid by showing some hospitality and letting us chow down on a warm meal. 
Don't know why the kid got rewarded, it's not even like she offered to help me fight the werewolf, we should have just left her in the woods. The Baron leaves us on a cliffhanger as to what happened next though, as he needs a favour. You see, his wife and daughter are missing, so in exchange for finding them, he will tell me everything about Siri. To find them I first need to see their rooms and pick up on a scent, like a guard dog, by finding a beloved possession or sniffing their underwear. The Baron asks that I specifically leave everything how it was when I found it, so apart from stealing all their valuables, I do exactly that. I find nothing in the bedrooms, but do find this talisman on the stairs which could be a clue, so I seek out the local Pella for some help. When I arrive, there's a load of the Baron's men also looking for him, and it's fair to say we haven't really got along so far, so obviously I get into another fight with him. I love how the Baron couldn't care less about me committing genocide on his men. As long as I find his wife and daughter, he's good with it. The Pella says he will help me, but at first I have to find his goat. Fuck me, everyone in these ends just wants something, no one does something out of kindness of their own heart. I like to live by the motto, expect nothing and you'll never be disappointed. That's why I still try and get in contact with my dad. So the Pella's goat is called Princess, and only answers when I ring this gay little bell, so now Geralt has gone from slaying monsters, to running around a forest ringing bells and calling out the name Princess. Geralt the goat fetcher at your service, how may I help you? I bring Princess home, and the Pella is absolutely over the moon, as I guess that means he's getting laid tonight. He then takes a few different substances, gets absolutely off his tits, and tells me that the Baron and his wife had a miscarriage, which was actually caused by the Baron himself. Jesus, that's rough. A life ended by one right hook. And I thought those other guys had chins worse than Cody Garbrandt. So it turns out if you don't give a miscarried child a proper burial, they can turn into these little horrible creatures called botchlings. I confront the Baron about all this, and he confirms it to be true, so we just kind of breeze over that whole domestic abuse thing, because the unborn fetus possibly roaming around his garden is kind of a bigger deal right now. Now I didn't believe it could actually be that ugly, but holy shit this thing literally looks like a colon. I met with a quick decision, to kill the botchling or turn it into a lubberkin. I go with the lubberkin option because I thought murdering Baron's unborn child in front of him would be a little bit rough. The whole reason why we're actually doing all this is because it has the same blood as the Baron and his wife and daughter, its spirit can lead us to where they are. A few wraiths appear as apparently the botchling is looking like a snack to them, but they're gonna have to choose another unborn fetus as this one is actually useful. So we bury the little ugly thing and 24 hours later say some magical words for its spirit to then rise up. I'm now literally following the ghost of an unborn child and no one seems to be questioning what's going on. On. It's also fast, like really fast. Like if it was loved enough to actually be born, it could have had some real potential in track and field. The Lubberkin eventually leads me to this cute little family hut out in the middle of nowhere. I asked the family living there if they'd seen the Baron's wife and daughter, and they're all like, nah mate, not a clue what you're on about, but then the kid bursts out and say that they were here the other night. Nice going, Todd, you fucking idiot. Turns out that his wife got dragged into the forest by some kind of monster, and his daughter is big chilling in the big city of Oxenfurt. I set off for Oxenfurt, which is quite a fair journey, and it's raining too. Geralt didn't even bring a raincoat either, so he's going to be soaked through by the time we get there. When I do get there, the guards tell me no one is allowed in by orders of the king himself, so now I'm going to have to think of a strategical plan to finesse my way into the city. You know, like diving into the water and just swimming in. They didn't really think this whole lockdown through, did they? I find Tamara, the Baron's daughter, and she's like, yeah, no, I'm not coming home, my dad's a bit of a dick, and I'm all like, yeah, fair enough, love, completely understand you don't want to be in that toxic environment. She does, however, still want to find her mother, so she's enlisted the help of the Eternal Fire Lads, so I just kind of leave her to do her own thing. And as we are in the big city, I decide to treat myself, freshen things up a bit, and get a brand new trim. I go for the classic moustache and soul patch combo, along with a haircut that says, I'm 50, but still go to rock concerts and try to chat up 18-year-old girls in the mosh pit. I also grab a couple beers, freshen up my armour and my swords, and this really did recharge the batteries nicely. So after a big one in the city, I head back to the Baron to tell him that his daughter is not coming back, and I'm no family therapist, so my task of finding her is done. He then tells me more about Siri, which includes me playing a horse race gaming's second worst mission structure behind tailing missions. I don't think anyone's ever played a horse racing mission in a game and thought, yeah, this is peak gameplay. This is what I want. I did, however, also just follow a ghost fetus around the map, so I guess pick your poison. The deal being, if Siri wins that race, she takes the Baron's horse, and she does exactly that. The Baron would then blue ball us a little bit more, telling us that for the rest of the story, I would need to find his wife. Thank you guys for the absolutely unreal support on the first video. It blew my mind. I cannot thank you enough. It's just been crazy. I want to do this as a series. If you wanted to see this as a series, leave a like, subscribe. That stuff all really does help as it helped with the last video. And we can smash through this game. It'll probably take me the entirety of 2022, but that's a fun series to have for the entirety of 2022. Thank you guys for my best year on YouTube. It's been insane. I've been a bit up and down this year mentally, but you guys have kept me going. It, is, it has really been a treat. I, I just can't thank you enough. 
Uh, I just hope there's bigger and better things to come for 2022. I hope you all have a great new year. I hope you all had a great Christmas if you celebrate it. If not, then I hope you just had a nice time with your family over the little break. And I appreciate you all. I'll see you in 2022. A big thank you as always to the to those of you who have clicked join button and become a member of the channel. Thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate every single one of you. I love you all. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. I just want to give a massive shout out to my motherload void boys and above, Gerardo Cruz, Bjorn Van Den Hatter, The Gamer Tech, Xyphon Productions, and Ghost Warrior 38. Thank you guys for your support.